The instructions are simple. Find the way you breathe, where you feel the breathing. And if the way you breathe is comfortable, keep breathing that way, and if it's not, you can change. At first, the sense of comfort may not be all that overwhelming, but allow it to be there all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. You may notice that if you breathe in too long, you're putting a stress, strain on that sense of comfort. If you shut it off too much and you don't get a sense of fullness. So try not to pinch the end of the breath and don't breathe in any more than you have to. But by the same token, as the Thais say, breathe with your whole abdomen. Let the breath go all the way down. And see how long you can maintain that sense of comfort. When it's there, at the same time that you're protecting it, trying to make sure that the boundaries are not too tight so that it can start seeping out to the other parts of your body. And sometimes you'll be surprised at how strong the sense of well-being can be. If you're too surprised, you get shocked and scared. So remember, there are outlets for the energy that may come with this sense of ease. In some cases, it's a tightness in the neck that holds it in, in which energy goes up into the head and it doesn't seem to have any way to get out. So try to adjust your posture so the neck can be open. Your throat can be open, and so the energy can go down or up, whatever way feels best. It can drain out of the head through the neck, down the shoulders, out the arms. Too much pressure in the chest, again, try to let it go out the arms, out the palms of your hands. And if letting the energy come down the front of the body doesn't help, think of the energy going down the spine and then out into the air from your tailbone. And John Fuhring used to have problems with headaches when he was young. And he found that just that, think of the energy going down the, the spine, out the tailbone, relieved a lot of the pressure. What happens when there's pressure is that you're actually focusing more on the liquid part of the body than you are on the, the breath, moving the blood around it, and finding that it runs into blockages. It's like undoing a blockage in one part of a system of pipes and then it runs into another one. So try to think of everything being wide open. You breathe with all the pores of your skin, in and out. If there's too much energy coming in, we'll just let it go back out again. See how long you can maintain this. Even as you get up and leave the meditation. And here again, find sometimes you may be scared to feel a sense of well-being as you go into the world. You feel exposed. After all, your pores are all open. It's like going out into the cold after a really hot bath. You may feel exposed to other people. Well, remember that the breath energy has a kind of force field to it. Remember also that the biggest things to fear in life are not what other people do, it's what you do. And many of the unskillful things we do is because we have a sense of hunger, a sense of lack. Or if we get a little something that we feel possessive of, we tense up around it. And that shell of tension creates more trouble. So try to think of the energy dynamic in your body and around you in a different way. The breath here is giving you not only a sense of ease, which helps you to relax, but concentration is a kind of strength. 
And the importance of that strength is it helps you prevent you from doing unskillful things. Because you've got a sense of well-being right here. The unskillful things we do either because we have something we're afraid that someone will take away, or feeling hungry for some kind of pleasure. Now in the first case, we've got this well-being from the breath. Nobody can take it away. We're the ones that keep dropping it. It's like molding something nice with clay. And then as you get up from the meditation, you just shatter it on the floor. I'll try to keep it well molded. You get up, walk around. One of the images in the canon is a person walking with a bowl full of oil on his head, filled to the brim. So there's a certain amount of poise you want to have as you go through the day. Don't jostle your concentration too much. And then you have this sense of well-being to draw on at any time. And remember that nobody else can take it away. It's yours. How you sense the body from inside, no one else can sense. No one can force you to breathe in a way that's unskillful, breathe in a way that adds to your stress. You're the one who's been breathing in a stressful way all along, and that's been adding a lot of stress on top of you. And that's often what creates that sense of lack, that sense of something is wrong. This is the other type of strength that you can draw on. You've got a sense of well-being that you can feed on. So when you're tempted to do something else simply for a sake of an instant pleasure, you're less likely to do it if you see that it's going to cause long-term suffering or, or harm down the line, either to yourself or to other people. And that sense of openness around you it doesn't expose you to other people. In fact, oftentimes when you're tense around other people, they sense that and they begin to tense up as well. So a lot of the dangers you sense in the world out there are actually reflections of your fear. So remember again that the things that other people can do to you are nothing compared to the things you can do to yourself through your unskillful actions. And the concentration is a strength that helps make it easier for you to resist the temptation to do the unskillful things that would cause harm to yourself and other people. So try to change your sense of the energy balance inside, and also change your sense of the energy balance outside. The things that people do that you might find irritating don't need to grate on you so much if you've got this sense of inner pleasure going. Now, in the beginning stages, when you're trying to get concentrated, and it seems very fragile and very easy to drop. It's very easy to get irritated by other people. But remember that their noises and whatever are not the problem. Their attitudes are not the problem. The problem is that you allow yourself to get distracted by them. In the John Chas phrase, it's not that noises come to disturb you, it's you're disturbing the noise. You can think of the noise going right through you and doing nothing. It's like what they say, the black, dark, excuse me, dark, dark energy going through doesn't have any impact on our, our normal sense of matter or energy. It just goes right through. Think of noises and other things from outside. It's just like that. It just goes right through you. It doesn't have to hit you. Often it's the problem is you're putting up a resistance. Again, it's you're tensing up around things, creating your shell. And something comes to break the shell and you get upset. Well, if you can go around without a shell, there's no shell to break. A lot of those things you thought would penetrate and destroy things inside really don't destroy anything at all. This is the basic message of the Four Noble Truths, is that the suffering we experience in the world, the suffering that really weighs down the mind, comes from inside. And People can be cruel outside, and people do horrible things outside, and they do. But it's how you respond, how you process that. That's what makes you suffer. 
This is why we hear cases of like Mogalana being beaten up by thieves. Okay, it was horrible things they did to his body. But his mind wasn't affected. That's the skill we're working on here. And we'll find that we as we work on this skill we'll be stumbling and picking ourselves up and stumbling and picking ourselves up again. But if you keep in mind the fact, okay, what we're working on here is an inner issue. So the outer issues don't really matter. That helps keep us and keep our practice in line. So remember, this sense of ease is something that you shouldn't be afraid of. There are ways of dealing with it, whether when it gets too intense. And at the same time, you shouldn't be afraid to carry it out of the meditation and into the world. It takes a while of getting used to it. It's like having your spine realigned. You walk out and it feels very strange. And there's a tendency to want to go back to having your spine out of alignment again because you're more familiar with it. You've got to fight that tendency. Because eventually you'll find that walking around with an aligned spine is a lot better. It's better for your health, better for the body as a whole. So we're getting our mind aligned, both in terms of the concentration and in terms of our views about where suffering is, where danger lies. We live in a world with lots of dangers, but we have to learn how to be with them and not let our fear create even more dangers. We also have to recognize where the genuine dangers are in our actions. Our ability to do and say and think unskillful things, things that are certainly really not in our long-term best interests, that we go for in the short term. That's the real danger. So having both this energy from the concentration, that sense of well-being from the concentration, and right view about what we have to be wary of, what we have to be heedful of. That can help us go more easily through the world.